Welcome, fellow anglers, to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I am Captain Ryan Van Fleet, your host here in the Florida Keys. Each week, I bring you fishing tips, interviews, gear reviews, and more to help you maximize your fishing trip, catch big fish, and overall have fun. This is episode 40, and I promise a couple tips. Now, these tips are for the bottom fishing guys. I have a large clientele that enjoy targeting bottom fish, like mutton snappers, groupers, vermilion snappers. They like to flatline for yellowtail. Now, we can do this when the tides and the currents are doable for this type of fishing. Guys, when it comes to bottom fishing, I really encourage you all to work smarter and not harder and to develop a, a bottom fishing program that works for yourself and your boat. Don't be concerned with what the other guy's doing. Just be concerned with yourself, and you're going to have so much more success out there. Now, my bottom fishing techniques are so simple <laughs> and hands-free that it really kind of shocks most guys that, um, that fish with me. Uh, they're like, whoa, what the heck, man? That's all, that's all this is? That's all you do? I <laughs> because there's so much elaborate crap out there on the internet that everybody's like reading and following in magazines and on YouTube. So that's why I encourage you guys to sort through all this stuff and figure out what actually works for you. Not, and don't be so concerned with what this guy does on YouTube or how this professional did it on, on, on this fishing show. I encourage you all to develop your own bottom fishing program. You're going to be so much happier when you and, and not to mention confident in your techniques and your abilities. It's taken me years to develop my bottom fishing program. Uh, when I say years, I mean years. A lot of trial and error. Um, I've spent a lot of money on hardware and failures. I've lost a lot of fish. Um, but I've had to go through that phase to get where I'm at today, to where I can consistently catch mutton snappers and groupers on my fishing charters. Now... I spend hours prior to each of my fishing charters prepping for a trip to make it look easy for my clients. Um, I want them to, uh, things need to move smoothly with no issues. I have several rods rigged ahead of time. And when one rod breaks off, I move to another rod and another rod and another rod. So I have, I have a very strong lineup of fishing rods rigged and ready for the type of fish that I'm targeting. Like I said, the trick is to make it look easy. And believe me, it's by far from easy. <laughs> now, it is very important, guys, to create a logbook. If you're not doing this, I highly suggest you do it. If you're not, you're only hurting yourself. Just keep that in mind. I'm not going to try. I'm not throwing you guys a bunch of crap out there. Um, Log books work, especially for fish like mutton snappers and wahoo. Now, what is satisfying to me is that I learned how to do all this on my own, and no one gave me the spots to catch these fish, guys, or gave me a log book or told me what to write down. I did it all on my own. So I encourage you guys to do stuff on your own. Um, pick up nuggets from this podcast and other professionals out there that are willing to share. The professionals out there that are willing to share, there's not too many of them anymore because they want, they want to start charging for their, <laughs> for their information. That's the way of the future, guys. And I'm sure you guys that are on Instagram and on Facebook are seeing it every day. So just keep that in mind. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in because I'm not going to steer you in the wrong direction, that's for sure. Okay, so for my listeners out there, here are a few little tips that are definitely going to help you guys catch more bottom fish this spring and summer. So listen closely. First, give the big gun mustad hooks a try. I like using size number two and number three for pilchards and pinfish and all the little little baits. And as far as the grouper fishing goes, I, I stick with the bigger um, number sevens, eights, and number nines. Now, I'm not a big fan of mustad. But I feel that they did get these big gun hooks right. So I do um, encourage you guys to give, give them a shot. So I strongly believe in making the most out of your time on the water, which means preventing downtime. What I mean by downtime, what causes downtime? Line tangles when it comes to bottom fishing, which, which, is, a, which is a big one. It can cause a lot of headaches, especially if it's rough out. So I do everything in my power 
to prevent line twist from happening. Now, selecting the right swivel is the key to preventing the line twists, especially if you're fishing in deeper water and using extremely long leaders. In previous podcasts, I mentioned that I used the Spro brand power swivels, the 50 to 80 pound, for constructing wind-on leaders for targeting mutton snappers. But a few months ago, I had to make the switch from the Spro brand to Diamond brand ball bearing swivels. Now, why did I make this switch? First, I was just seeing way too many problems with the Spro brand swivels out of the package. I had the swivels were failing, guys. I am not kidding you. I had never seen this before, um, and I've been using Spros for many years. Now, not only was I finding a lot more defective Spro swivels that were coming out of the package, but what I was seeing was a, a lot more line twists, more so than I did last year. I was like, oh my gosh. So something was def- something's definitely going on with the Spro swivels. So I had a conversation with my commercial fishing buddy, and he made the recommendation that I change over to diamond ball bearing swivels, and that would eliminate the the line twist problems that I was having. So I was like, eh, Um, I was reluctant because I've been using Spro for so long, but I didn't have a choice, so (laughs) I gave the diamond ball bearing swivels a try. And I have to tell you that I'm extremely happy that I did. (laughs) I was like... Oh my gosh, I'm like so happy that I made the switch from the Spro to the Diamond ball, diamond brand ball bearing swivels, especially when using you know, the long leaders. When I say long leaders, 50 to 100 feet and the heavy weights for bottom fishing. I basically eliminated all the line twist problems I was having and I have not yet seen a failure since I switched and that's the truth. Now make sure you guys refer back to the show notes when it comes to the ball bearing swivels. I have a lot of detail in this episode's show notes, so you guys can refer back to the show notes when it comes time to prep for a bo- for your bottom fishing trip. So like I promised in a previous episode that I'm going to be doing more detailed show notes for these how-to and, and tips and techniques episodes. So as promised, it's there, so make sure you take a look at it on my website on podcast page for episode 40. So guys... I highly encourage you to make the switch to a um, ball bearing swivel. I personally love the Diamond brand ball bearing swivels. They are badass. And that's the truth. So that's enough said on ball bearing swivels. Like I said, you can refer to the show notes for more details. Now, the next product I'm going to talk about is something that I just trialed over the weekend on um, on on two different charters, actually three different charters, and... The product is kicking ass. <laughs> I have to admit, I am so happy I found this product. Uh, I'm like, in, I'm like loving it. The product is, is called a bait button. <laughs> yes, a bait button. Now, these little buttons keep the live baits and the dead baits locked onto the hook. Now, frisky live baits like a pilchard or a live ballyhoo have a tendency to wiggle their way up the hook or onto the line, or they flip back over on the hook, resulting in the pilcher getting fouled up on the bait while it drops. So many different things that can happen when you're when a bait's 200 feet down below getting dragged across the ocean bottom with a you know with a 10 or 20 ounce weight attached to a 50 to 100 foot leader. <laughs> <laughs> so many things can happen, not to mention that the bait is attached to a small, tiny hook. Just think about that a little bit, and then it'll all make sense to you. So with I had been using materials like soft beads and rubber bands and zip ties to keep the baits in place on the hooks and to keep them from fouling up. Then I found the bait buttons, and I'm like, oh my God, what you know? where have I been, and why haven't I been using these? Now, they're They've been around for a while, but they're really used in the trout and salmon um, fishing industry and sturgeon out on the um, out on the West Coast. So I've, I found them in a Google search, and I was like, oh, my gosh, freaking amazing. 
So on their web page is a YouTube video showing you, you know, basically how to rig a minnow. It's you know you rig the minnow the same that you would rig a pilchard using the bait buttons, and that's exactly how I do it. Guys, these bait buttons keep the bait pegged to the hook, and the fish just the the presentation is just absolutely awesome. Now. I've used them, um, like I said, on. I want you guys to refer to the show notes and take a look at what we caught on. I think it was Sunday with Bernardo and Pedro and and Kevin. We just uh, they had a mutton f- a bonanza using the bait buttons, and then on the prior day with Gary on a on a shorter day, we man we did we just he caught a big African pompano, African pompano. He caught numerous mutton snappers. He just had an awesome day using these bait buttons. Zero hook fouls. It was, and we were, what was great was, is that we were bringing up pilchers and dropping them back down from 300 feet and we're using the same bait several times. So I, I, anyway, so I was just in shock um, how well these worked. So I really encourage you guys to, um, you know, give this product a try. Uh, www.baitbuttons.com. Uh, it, like in my show notes, I describe what types of buttons I'm using. I'm using two different types of buttons. They have a big game button and an original bait button. And I also put the cost of the products on the web page that you can refer to. And then I also put the link to the YouTube video that they have on their site that shows you exactly how I rig the pilchards. And I'm following exactly what they what they do on there, guys. No secrets. So I do plan on using these bait buttons for other applications that are grinding away in my brain. <laughs> that are gonna it's gonna make life so easy out on the water. Uh, so I want you guys to stay tuned. Um, stay tuned to uh, learn a little bit more about what I'm gonna do with the live bait. Now, as far as the dead bait goes, I had one day when I you know, I took young Aiden. Um, a good client of mine from from Maine, his family, you know, they come down here every year and they book me in April. And Aiden is, um, is I think Aiden's like 13 years old and the, he gets to fish down here once a year and he's just a good fisherman. And this year we took him yellowtail snapper fishing and I pinned the, the little pieces of Benito onto the, the small yellowtail hooks using the, um, the bait buttons. By doing this, it made it a hell of a lot harder for the bait fish to rip the bait off the hook. Uh, the bait fish had a hard time getting to it. The trigger fish couldn't rip it off. And then I was able to get back to the mutton. It, I'm sorry, not the mutton snappers, but to the yellowtails in the drift. And we caught a bunch of jumbo yellowtails using just, I think I only used like maybe six to eight pieces of bait, little pieces of bonito on this trip. Which is unheard of. Now, in the I think Aiden caught eight jumbos, but he lost another five to you know to the predators. We had uh, we had some sharks show up. There's a lot of sharks in the Keys, and you guys can Google it right now. We've got great whites here and hammerheads, and they're here and they're here like a, and they're here in numbers. So uh, I think on Saturday I seen three um, three hammerheads, which was you know, you know which is. Well, that's and you got you have great whites here as well, so it's kind of crazy right now. But anyhow, aside, I got off a little off topic. Um, give the bait buttons a try, and you can find the information on the show notes. And stay tuned for more information, as I'm going to be using these a lot over the next few months. Okay, the next tip, guys. Chum. <laughs> yes, chum. And yes, there is chum that people don't talk about. I'm sure you guys have heard about the elusive salmon chum that people are using in Miami that the, the, the certain companies make, and only a few guys get a hold of it, and then the guys brag about it because, and then, then they don't tell you where to get it. I made the switch a few months ago to a product called uh, a chum product called Captain's Choice Pure Sardine Chum. Now I had been I had heard about this product from a commercial fishing buddy. And he encouraged me to give it a try a few months ago. But like anybody, I'd, I like anything else, man, I was setting my bottom fishing routine, and I have to trial it before I use it. So the 
I had depleted my supply of the chum that I was previously using, so I decided to give the captain Captain's Choice pure sardine chum a try. So I gave uh, Robert at Captain's Choice a call, and I ordered the the chum in you know twenty five pound blocks, and I or, and I ordered it, I, and I order it in blo- in um in bulk quantities, just like the commercial fishing guys do down here. Now and I and I store it in various freezers that I have in the house. My um, God bless my wife; <laughs> she puts up with all the freezers. <laughs> but anyhow, this chum is now my number one choice of chum for yellowtail snapper fishing in the Florida Keys. The fish love the sardine oil in the Captain's Choice chum. Now, what's so different about this chum? It's a hundred percent pure sardine chum. There's no additives of other fish. There's no junk in it. It's just pure sardine chum. Now, what I found is is that the bait goes crazy for this stuff, and it, it comes up. The bait actually comes up very quickly before the chum even starts to work in some cases because of the oil content is so nice. It's just the slick that you get from Captain's Choice is, uh, compared to others is 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 pretty cool. So you just got to see it to believe it. Uh, now, what I found out was is that Captain's Choice is used by a majority of the commercial fishing fleet down here throughout the Florida Keys as their chum <laughs> for targeting yellowtail snapper. <laughs> I didn't know about it because there are a lot of secrets down here that nobody really talks about. And it's just how it goes. And I'm very happy, very fortunate that I that I learned about this little nugget from a commercial fishing buddy, and he encouraged me to try it. So I did, and I've had nothing but um, you know, great success. And the customer service that Captain's Choice provides me is outstanding. Now, if you're going to order in bulk, you can give Robert a call at 305-815-8290. But if you just need one or two blocks, there are only a few tackle shops in South Florida that carry Captain's Choice. It's, this stuff is hard to find. So what I did for you guys is I did put a list of these hard to find shops on my, on the show notes for this episode for you guys to um, take a look at it. Give it a shot, guys. Um, Tournament chum, I've seen a big decline in it. The stuff's getting to be junk. So not happy with it at all. And I'm, and I try not to use the stuff. If I, if I, if I don't have to use it, I don't use it. That includes blue label and that includes tournament green. So I encourage you guys to move on to a different brand of chum. Um, either use the, um, my choices of chum right now are my number one choice is captain's choice. And my second choice is killer bait. Now I get the killer bait down in marathon from from badass baits and they carry um they carry killer bait but so do a lot, a lot of other companies but that's just where I who I um who I buy it from down here and one last tip guys that doesn't have anything to do with um, bottom fishing because I feel that I've kind of gone over what I need to go over that's gonna like take your bottom fishing game just with those few little items that I talked about it's gonna elevate it very quickly to a different level. So trust me, <laughs> try the stuff out. So my last shout out goes out to Wild Willie's witches. I cannot say enough good things about Wild Willie and his witches. His customer service is outstanding. He works with his clients one-on-one and wants to make sure you get the right wit, the right sea witch for your application, whether that be downrigger fishing or surface fishing. His sea witches are, um, and not to mention, his sea witch heads are just, they're just, are awesome. They're absolutely perfect. It takes a lot to scratch these heads, so the paint just stays intact. And not to mention, the guy ties one hell of a witch. Like I mentioned in the previous podcast, the hair stays intact. He uses high-quality materials. Uh, You can... um, (laughs) You can catch several dolphin on one lure and wahoo before the before they show any signs of wear. I just had an awesome wahoo early season when I was dragon lures using the um, his his crystal over blue. Um, it's like the winged. Um, it's like a winged um, flying fish. So it was like 
two sides of the um, the sea witch were crystal, and he put some blue in there. It was just it's just an awesome witch, and not to mention that orange head. You can that orange head is like fire when it comes to fish. Uh, now you can place a custom order through by contacting Wild Willie through his Facebook page. He doesn't have a website, which I which I think is cool. So just get a hold of him personally. Now I am working on testing a couple new lures that I haven't shared with you guys because they're still in the testing phase. Now I was planning on using them last week, but the dolphin fishing sucks down here. I'm hoping that it improves here after this big blow that we have this week. There are a few fish getting caught, a few slammers, but they're way south down by Marathon. A few guys are getting lucky as usual, but it's the Florida Keys, man. It's some of the best fishing in the world, and somebody every day is going to catch a big fish down here. So, But keep it in mind that there's a lot of water down here, and there's a lot of boats fishing every day. Even on the off days, there's a lot of boats fishing. I say off days, Monday through Friday, but even um, but even Thursday is the new Friday now down here. <laughs> Guys, that's all I've got for today. Remember to refer to the show notes for this episode. It's episode forty, and you can find the episode on the and you can find the detailed show notes on my website's podcast page. And then my website is www.goodkarmasportfishing.com. And then go to the podcast page on the website and pull up episode 40. Now, I spent a lot of time uh, putting together the show notes for you guys for this episode so you can refer back to them as a reference when you're putting together, um, you know, doing your ordering and all that good stuff and putting together um, your bottom fishing rigs to try out. So, anyways, that's all I got. Have a good one. Thanks for listening, guys. And as always, please let me know if you have any questions. You can email me at goodkarmaryan at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Good Karma Fishing Charters, Instagram at Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL underscore Keys. And please also share this podcast with a fellow angler and check out my website, www.goodkarmasportfishing.com and sign up for my monthly newsletter and free fishing tips. I aim to provide you with fishing tips and information so you can make the best out of your time fishing. Thanks for listening, and remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.